Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Physics of Under. This is the seventh video from tensor analysis. In the previous video, we discussed about outer and inner product between two tensors. In that video, we see that concept of contraction is used during calculation of inner product. In this video, we discuss about contraction in detail and also solve some related problems. Hope you will enjoy this video. Please watch this video till the end. If you like this video, please share this with others. If you are new to my channel, then please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for future notifications. Let's start the video. Let us first see what is contraction of a tensor. If one contravariant index and one covariant index of a tensor are equal, then we get the resulting tensor by following the summation convention over equal indices. For that, the identical indices should be dropped and we got a resulting tensor of rank which is lowered by 2 from the original tensor. This process is called contraction. Let's see this with an example. For that, we consider a tensor A with contravariant indices i, j, k and covariant indices p and q. That means, this is a mixed tensor of rank 5, contravariant rank 3 and covariant rank 2. If we set contravariant index i is equal to and covariant index p, then we get a tensor with contravariant indices j and k and with covariant indices q. That means here the identical index i and p which are set equal are dropped and hence we get a resulting tensor of rank 3 which is lowered by rank 2 from the original given tensor. This is contraction. We use this process in the concept of inner product which we can see in the previous video. Let prove this concept of contraction. For that, we consider a tensor A of rank 5 with contravariant indices i, j, k and covariant indices p and q. In Bard coordinate system, this tensor can be transformed like this equation which shows on the screen. If we set alpha is equal to mu, alpha is the contravariant index and mu is the covariant index of that tensor in Bard coordinate system. So, in case of contraction, we have to set one contravariant index and one covariant index should be equal. Here we set alpha is equal to mu. If we do so, then we get the transformation equation like this. Here, in fourth differential term, the denominator index alpha is written in place of mu because we set alpha is equal to mu. If we combine the first and fourth differential term together, then we get this Kronecker delta term with contravariant index p and covariant index i. We uh, discuss how Kronecker delta term can be represented in tensor analysis from the very first video of this series. You can see that video from the link at the top. The rest 3 differential term and the tensor in the unbought coordinate are left like before. If we set i is equal to p, then only Kronecker delta term becomes 1 and we get the equation like this. Here. Now we consider the given tensor A with contravariant indices i, j, k and covariant index i and q like a tensor B with contravariant index j and k and covariant index q so that we transform this tensor like this in Bard coordinate system. If we consider like this then we get the left hand side of the above equation like tensor B with contravariant index 
beta and gamma and covariant index sigma all these in the barred coordinate system the three differential term just unchanged and the tensor a should be replaced by tensor b with contravariant index j and k and covariant index q in unbarred coordinate system if we notice this blocked equation carefully then we clearly see that this is nothing but a transformation equation of a mixed tensor of rank 3 so we can say that the tensor b which is contraction of given tensor a is a tensor of rank 3 but the original tensor which we got at the beginning of the the proof we see that the rank of that original tensor is 5 but after contraction we get a tensor of rank 3 so clearly we see that contraction of the original tensor gives a resulting tensor of rank lowered by 2 with respect to the original tensor if we take another contraction of this resulting tensor then what we get in that case we set contravariant index j and covariant index q equal then we get another tensor c with contravariant index k that means this is a tensor of rank 1 so what we get we start with a tensor a of rank 5 one contraction of that tensor gives another tensor b of rank 3 further contraction or on b we get another tensor c of rank 1 that means for each contraction rank of a tensor reduced by 2 if we combine this concept with inner product and outer product then we can clearly say that inner product is equivalent to outer product plus contraction let's see how if we consider in the in the previous video we see that if we take a outer product of a tensor of rank 3 and rank 2 then we get the outer product tensor of rank 5 if we do contraction on that outer product tensor then we get the resulting tensor lowered by rank 2 that means we get a tensor of rank 3 okay again if we take inner product of those given two tensor of rank 3 and 2 then we get the resulting inner product tensor of rank 3 so we can clearly say that if we take outer product of two tensor then we take contraction of the outer product tensor so we get the result like inner product that means inner product is equivalent to a outer product of given two tensor then contraction on that outer product let's see some problems we have to prove the given product a i j k b i q is not a tensor clearly here contravariant index i from both tensor a and b are equal okay we consider transformation equation of tensor a with contravariant index i and j and covariant index k and tensor b with contravariant index p and covariant index q like these as in the screen if we multiply these two tensors then what we get we get this equation as in the screen here we just multiply term by term nothing else now we set alpha is equal to mu because here alpha and mu are the corresponding components of i and p in the barred coordinate system and if we see in the problem we see that these index indices are set equal so in barred coordinate system we also set equal alpha and mu if we do so we get the transformation equation like this 
Here in the fourth differential term, we write alpha instead of mu. Rest is same. If we combine first and fourth differential term, then we can't get Kronecker delta term. That's why this transformation equation is not tensorial in character. And this given product is not a tensor. Let's see another problem. Here, we have to prove a i j i p a p q is not a tensor. Okay. For that, we take a transformation equation of tensor A with contravariant indices i j k and covariant index p q like this on the screen. Now, we clearly see that i is equal to k in the problem. So, we have to consider the corresponding components that means alpha and gamma should be equal. If we do so, we get the transformation equation like this. Here, we write in the third differential term alpha instead of gamma. If we combine first and third differential term, then again we can't get a Kronecker delta term. And so, the given transformation equation is not tensorial in character. That's why the given term is not a tensor. We consider another problem. What is that? We have to prove contraction of APQ is a scalar or invariant. For that, let's start with the transformation equation of the given tensor like this. For contraction, we have to set alpha is equal to beta. If we do so, we get the transformation equation like this. Here we write alpha instead of beta. If we combine these two differential terms, then we get a Kronecker delta term with contravariant index Q and covariant index P. Now, if P becomes equals to Q, then only this Kronecker delta term becomes 1. For all other values of P, this Kronecker delta term becomes 0. So, we set P is equal to Q, then we get a tens uh, the result like this. Here also, contravariant index becomes P and covariant index is also becomes P instead of Q. Clearly, contravariant and covariant index here equal. So, we get a tensor of rank lowered by 2. If this is a rank of 2, then we get a tensor of rank 0. Because he here P and Q are set equal. That's why we get a tensor of rank lowered by 2. And the original tensor is of rank 2. That's why contraction of this tensor is of rank 0. And we see that in the previous videos that tensor of rank 0 is nothing but a scalar and scalar is a invariant quantity. So, we can say that contraction of APQ is a scalar as well as invariant quantity. Hope you enjoy this video. If you have some queries or suggestion, then please write in the comment section below. Your comments will definitely help me to improve my future videos. Thanks for watching this video.